Hello everyone, this is Zatras Writer and you are watching the second episode of our programming series featuring Eclipse Software Development Kit. In this episode we will look into the installation of Eclipse itself. Also included will be requirements like Java that you need to fulfill in order to run it. In the end we will look into installing and configuring PHP Eclipse, a plugin for PHP development. So let's start with the installation. First of all, you may want to check if you have Java installed on your computer. Because Eclipse is written in Java, it will not run unless you have it installed. Good news is that the executable file, for Windows at least, will automatically check if Java is present and will show you a warning if it's not. In case you don't have Java installed on your PC, simply navigate to www.java.com and download the latest version. Installation of Java is quite straightforward and consists of a simple wizard, just like any other installation out there. Once you have Java installed, all you have to worry about is going to www.eclipse.org, clicking the Download Eclipse button and choosing to download Eclipse Classic version. Now reason for me to download exactly this version is that it always worked from the start. Of course you can download any version and the outlined procedure would probably work for you as well if you are feeling adventurous. Then simply choose your download location aka a mirror and off you go to a coffee break or whatever since it will take a while to download 150 megabytes of data. Once downloaded open it and extract the Eclipse folder anywhere to your computer. If you have Windows XP system or higher you will be able to open the zip file directly by double clicking it. Otherwise you might need to install something like 7-zip or some other archiver to extract this data. Then navigate into the Eclipse folder and voila! Run the Eclipse executable file to see your very own Eclipse running on your computer. When you first start the program you will be asked to select the so-called workspace folder. This is the folder in which Eclipse will store all your files, so it's best to set it to your htdocs folder where your web development work is located. A subfolder by the name of metadata, starting with a period, will be created in your workspace folder as well. This is a folder where Eclipse stores its settings, so if you ever want to move to another PC, simply grab the Eclipse folder and this metadata folder and transfer them to a new place. Yeah, piece of cake! Upon starting, you will be welcomed by a welcome screen, which you can successfully ignore and furthermore close, so it does not bug you anymore. At this point, you will only have development environment that is meant for developing Java stuff, so there is not much to look at yet. However, there is lots to look at in the Preferences dialog. You can access it by going to the Window menu and choosing Preferences. Now, you are absolutely free to explore this area on your own and skip this part of the video completely if you so desire. What you will see here are some options that made my life easier while working with Eclipse, so it's more of a tips thingy than anything else. First one that makes my eye pleased is the Show Heap status checkbox. This is really more of a visual thing and when ticked it will show you how much memory is Eclipse using. In the editor section I used to expand the list of recently opened files to 10 and since I like to see line numbers even in ordinary text files, not just PHP or HTML files, I tick this option in the text editor section. I also usually opt out of spell checking since I don't want spelling to be checking MySQL dumps or HDXS files as it tends to slow Eclipse quite a lot. Let's move on to the keys section. This is a part showing all the keyboard shortcuts available in Eclipse itself. And to be honest, some of them really suck or maybe I'm just an old schooler. But anyways, who would use Ctrl key for a find next command if most of the editors use F3 key here? Ok, so let's improve this and while at it, let's also update the find previous and go to line commands, since these don't make sense to me either. For startup and shutdown, I simply untick this second option, so Eclipse does not bug me with confirmation every time I try to close it. And I also want the workspace to be refreshed upon starting Eclipse, so I get the latest code changes analyzed in case I change something outside Eclipse. This is quite important especially if you are working with PHP and want your code completion to work correctly. I also opt out from automatic updates since they failed me a few times before already and I don't really trust them anymore. At the workspace section 
I tend to change files encoding to UTF-8 since that's the character set I use most frequently. If you're Japanese or something, you can choose UTF-16, however this will make your files a lot bigger, so if you're not using characters contained in that encoding, I'd advise to switch to UTF-8 and switch back to UTF-16 later in case you need an exception. Also, the only correct new line delimiter for me is, and always was, Unix line endings. Now, we might get into this in some later videos, but if you're curious, there is a link to a nice article about this in the video description. This really is just about everything I used to change in the default settings, so let's move on to installing PHP Eclipse now. Start by opening your browser and navigating to www.phpeclipse.com, where you will see the link we need to copy and paste into Eclipse on the right side. Installation of new features into Eclipse is mostly quite easy, so all you need to do is hover your mouse over the stable update side link and copy the link location or click on it and copy the location from your address bar. Now switch back to Eclipse, click on the Help menu and choose Install new software. This is the installer interface for Eclipse where you can add new plugins and features. It uses a list of repositories, in other words locations where plugins are stored. You will see two predefined repositories already in the list. These contain list of official plugins supported by the Eclipse project but none of them is PHP Eclipse, so we need to add our own repository. To do this, click on Add button and type in any name into the name text field. This will only serve the purpose of you being able to recognize the repository, so name it accordingly. Then, paste the link we have just copied over from the PHP Eclipse website into the location text field and click OK. If everything goes as it should, you will see PHP Eclipse stable builds checkbox that just appeared in our plugins list. Expand this to see all the components available and choose the ones you will use. I only use PHP Eclipse, so I choose that. When you click the next button, you will see a list of all components you chose to install. Click next again to accept license agreements for each of these and then finish to start the installation procedure. PHP Eclipse may take a while to download since it's not exactly a small package, so be patient here and if it looks like nothing is happening, it might actually be your internet connection letting you down. Upon successful download, you will be asked to confirm that you really want to install this content since it is unsigned. Confirm this or view details of all the files that are about to be installed first and off you go. Once installed, you will do best to restart Eclipse so nothing fails when you try to use the plugin. Ok, so the first thing that is not that obvious is a whole new perspective that was added into Eclipse. Perspective is basically a visual layout that you currently see, the working environment in other words. PHP Eclipse automatically installs a PHP perspective, which you can access by clicking on the perspectives button and choosing other PHP. Now that's more like it. You might have noticed that the left section has changed into a navigator and the bottom section contains four new tabs that unfortunately I find completely useless so I basically just close them all. When open, there are two buttons on the right side of each tab. As shown on the outline tab, first one is minimize which will move the tab out of the view and minimize it into a compact icon. You can then restore it using the restore button or you can actually just open it which will bring the tab to front but we'll minimize it back as soon as some other element becomes active. These minimize icons can be moved around the perspective as well, so again, don't be afraid to experiment. Let's have a look at some PHP Eclipse options as we're just about to end this video. So as we open preferences again, we'll see that a new item PHP Eclipse has been made available to us. Are you as eager to explore it as I am? Good. Let's get to it then, shall we? PHP Eclipse configuration has quite a few options, so I'll only run through the ones I consider vital for a user experience. First of all, you can change colors to suit your needs in the Syntax tab of the PHP option. The selection is quite vast, however, I wasn't really able to transfer color settings when I was moving to another computer, so I simply leave this at its default values. There is quite a lot to explore in the typing section as well. Apart from standard word wrapping, you can choose to wrap quoted strings as well. Now the letter, however, works a bit differently than I would expect. When you have quoted text and you press enter in that text, 
wanting to go to the next line. PHP Eclipse will automatically close the quotes for you and open a new set on the next line. This is really useless for me, so I usually turn it off. You can also have any text pasted into a quoted string to be escaped, which could really be a handy feature, although I don't see why this is conditioned by having the wrapping turned on. Anyways, it's there for your usage. The rest of these options are quite self-explanatory, like this automatic quotes, brackets and comments closing. Now I wasn't able to successfully test code folding in this version, might be something on my part, but feel free to check out my previous Crash Course video to see the code folding in action. I always loved this trailing spaces removal option in editor section. What it does is that it removes all empty spaces you might have left in your code. For instance, when you press enter four times and start typing on the fourth line, the editor will most probably leave tabs everywhere on those previous three lines. If you are having lots of code like this, this option comes really handy. It removes all those tabs in empty lines, but nowhere else. This also removes spaces and tabs from the end of lines where no other code follows them, saving lots of space. Sweet! In PHP Parser, you can select which problems you want to be visually notified of. The notification takes a form of underlining the problematic parts of code and also marking them next to the scroll bar on the right side so you can instantly see them. For visual example, refer to the previous Crash Course video or try it on your own. This is just about everything on installing and configuring Eclipse and PHP Eclipse that is probably sane to present for the moment. So thank you all for watching and I hope this helped you in some way or another. In the next video, we will look into the actual usage of PHP Eclipse itself, so we will see what all these settings actually do. Until then, have a great time and adios!